Should you buy your own house first to live in or should you use that money and start your own business? This is part three of our ongoing series about business versus buying your own house. So if you want to know more, check this video out. Please subscribe to Marvin's channel and don't forget to hit the bell. Can you say please subscribe in Mandarin? I don't know. Oh, so enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Hey guys, so this is part 3 of our ongoing series, what should you prioritize first, buying your own house or starting your own business. This time, as you can see, I don't have any guests, it's just me sharing my own ideas for this video. So. The only things I could tell you guys is based also from my own experience and I, I'll just share it uh, as I as I go along. Please remember this, currently right now we also have property but also in the same way I've been also doing business for quite some time. So I started out, for those who followed my backstory, I started out uh, as an employee. As I started out as an employee, of course my capital, I didn't have anyone give me capital, I didn't have, my parents didn't give me anything. So. Basically, all of the capital that I have was something that I would uh, get from my salary, from bonuses, or extra things that I would get along the way. So for me, the most logical thing that I could have done at that point in time was uh, start a business, was to create side hustles. Because if you under you have to understand this. When you buy a condominium, when you buy your own house, it will require a lot of money. It would require a large amount of capital. Meaning, if you'd buy something worth 5 million, at least, at the very least, you already need a million pesos, 20% equity, to be able to have a down payment to that. Or, if you, you're buying something worth 10 million pesos, 20% uh, equity is around 2 million. But as what you've seen, in, not just in my videos, but in other videos where I interviewed a lot of people, the whole context and the whole narrative of that is the more money you down, you put in as a down payment, it would actually be better because uh, since you're putting in a smaller amount, uh, you're putting in more money, the interest payment that you will uh, pay later on will be cheaper, which is what's very, very ideal as well. That being said also, uh, when when I when I started, it didn't make sense for me to buy a condominium because I, I didn't have a million pesos at that time, 2005, 2006. I barely, I graduated from college, uh, took the board exam. And then I had just a few hundred pesos across my name. My, the first bank account that I had was my payroll account. And then I had to wait until my salary. Then after that, what I did was I opened the passbook account where in that passbook account, that's where I would take out my salary and put a certain amount every 15 and every 30 that I wouldn't touch. So what made sense for me was to start my own business first because number one, it entailed capital. I didn't have the capital to be able to... Uh, to be able to buy my own property first, to be able to live uh, to, at a certain place first. And please, please note this, it will all be dependent on when you start thinking about it. Because if I thought about it when I, was when, I would, when I was 30 years old as compared to 21 years old, most likely I would have more capital at 30 years old as compared to when I was at 21 years old. So if you are 30, 35, 40 right now and you have capital, Hmm, to be able to buy, to be able to down, to be able to put in money, then it's a different story. In my case, I really didn't have capital. That's why it was easier for me to start businesses. Uh, for businesses, and if, if, if you've been watching the previous videos that I've been creating, you can start as, you can start your own business with a very, very small amount of money. You can start uh, buying and selling. You can start doing stuff without having millions across your name. So just a rule of thumb if you're starting out and then there was no compelling reason I forgot to say this there was no compelling reason for me to buy a house at that time since I was single the only time I started to buy property where I lived in it was when I already proposed to my wife and then when we got married that was the only time that uh, I would <laughs> I, I got something and I say this all the time if you're single the best thing that you could ever do is don't buy property yet live with your parents you will save a lot of money because please remember this if you buy a house Totoo naman, it's really a liability because if you buy a house, you're gonna pay uh, interest, you're gonna pay uh, juice, you're gonna pay meralco, you're gonna pay water. There are a lot of uh, underlying charges attached to it. But please don't get me wrong, it's not bad to buy property that you're gonna live in. That's why even for myself, I even bought also for, for myself because it's something that I knew is, it was it was something that was needed. But again, it will depend on what stage you are in. It will depend on uh, what your battle plan will be as well so at that time uh if you when i was still single 
I, ju I just kept saving and saving and saving and saving. I kept investing and doing business because I realized this. If, if I would put a doubt payment, and there were a lot of schemes already at that time that you uh, you buy pre-selling, you just put in 20, 30, 40,000 a month. By the time it uh, turns over uh, three, four years later, that's when you start getting the loan. It looked attractive also because you only needed, you only... Uh, had to put a small amount of money what's putting 10 20 30000 also but at that time uh, that 10 20 30000 if i put it in a business if i invested it somewhere else it was already yielding me a profit it would yield me something that i would not get yet into something that i would also live in please remember iba yung story that when you buy your own condo and you have it rented out it's another story versus you buy your own own condo and then you live in it because if you live in it of course there will be appreciation as what Carl D said on the second video that 10 20 years down the line 30 years down the line if you want to sell it because of the capital appreciation attached to it you will make a lot of money also from that from it but if you plan to earn money at that very moment in time of course you won't, you're not gonna earn until you actually sell uh, that prop that property so that was my logic that if I use the 20,000 30,000 40,000 uh, instead of buying something that was pre-selling, I could have used it into something that would have generated me uh, money. And this is what I've been telling people, 20000 you go to Divisoria, you go to Baclaran, you go to Tai Tai, you buy shirts there, you buy clothes there, you buy stuff that are very, very cheap in those areas, sell it in Shopee, sell it in Lazada, sell it in Instagram, sell it uh, to your office mates, sell it to your friends. Uh, you will get a larger amount of money in 20,000 mo mas mabilis mo siya madoble if you buy a property and you live in it of course there will be capital appreciation but you won't be able to uh, experience it you won't be able to uh, see the benefits of it yet the very the most important thing that you need to uh, figure out in all of this is what's your game plan Carl D said it right also that if you have a family and then that family also requires uh, it might be better it might they want Peace of mind is one of your most important factors. You want that your kids won't be able to, uh, will be able to, alam mo, there's some sort of stability that you will be in a certain area for that specific, for a very, very long period of time already. Then by all means, buy the house. But please remember, very, very important, you need to have the cash flow for it. You need to have the cash flow that uh, your other goals, please remember, there, it's not just about having a house. So you will have other goals still that are important. You need to be, you need to prepare money for your financial freedom. You need to prepare money if you have kids for whatever educational needs that they will have. You need to also prepare money for uh, emergency funds. So my my direct answer to all of this is it depends if it fits your financial goals. It, 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 it depends if it fits the numbers that you've already placed in. Because if the numbers make sense, if the numbers actually say that, hey, you can actually afford to buy your own own house without destroying other things and you can still have a business then go for it but based on my experience I did business first then as business started to get better as investment started to get better then that's when I started to uh, buy property so my rule of thumb is I will use cash I will use active income to grow my money when money is starting to grow when money is getting better that's when I start buying property as well the flip side because if you buy property first is your cash is strapped but the advantage here is this uh, lang sa akin, jackpot lang that uh, the things that I started, the things that I did, actually earned money. It might be another story if we could interview someone also that nag business, nag invest, and the business and investments did not do well. That's where the property would have been a better choice because if you place 500,000, a million pesos, or you place the 20, in, instead of putting the 20,000 na pang down payment uh, or na pang uh, pre selling. And then you put it in the business and then that business did not do well. It, it actually flopped. Buying the property might have been better for you because you now have a place to live. You're not paying for rent. And then you also have something that's appreciating in value. Because if you, you have, you have to understand this also. Pag nag-business ka, nalugi yung business. And then you're not living, you're, you don't have a house. You're still paying rent somewhere. So yung gastos mo doble. You put in money to something that did not earn for you. Then you are paying out, you're paying out rent. Pa, then you don't have something that will give you capital appreciation. If you're if you're living with your parents, see, okay lang, you have the best of both worlds because you're not uh, paying out rent to a lot of people. So that's the arbitrage. It again, it will always go back to where you are in life. If you are if you are not a very very entrepreneurial person, you're not a person who do, doesn't like to do business. You're not a person who uh, doesn't value the the hustle of the grind of entrepreneurship. Because I'll tell you this, entrepreneurship. It's not so easy. People always say that the end goal is makalis lang ako sa trabaho ko, magsa-start ako sa business. That's not the end goal because if you start your own business, the problems, 
<laughs> just become bigger. The problems just become harder. The problems become more amplified because you have no fallback plan. If you fail, it's all on you. You don't have a boss to blame. You don't have anyone else to blame but yourself if it doesn't go well. So if you think in your heart of hearts, that's why I've been saying it all the time. It's a case-to-case -case basis because if you know in your heart of hearts, you're not really an entrepreneur. You're not really someone who wants to be self-employed. You just want uh, daily work. You just uh, then buy a house buy property, work hard on your job, then find other investments that can supplement uh, your current job description. So that's it for now. This is part three. If you want to hear part one and two, I'll put them all on the description below. Part one, we Shansi actually said that uh, it's better to start your own business. Then part two, uh, Carl D. gave his own opinion that mm, it's better to buy your own house first as compared to doing business. And for me, I shared my own experience that I did business first, then I did property later. I started business, I started side hustles 2006. I bought property 2011. So it took me five more years before I actually put in the money to uh, get property as well. So I'll interview more people so that they can give you their opinions as well. Comment below if you're learning from this. Comment below based on this three-part series already. What are, you, what are you more convinced in doing? Are you buying your own property or are you starting your own business? I want to also know what's more applicable. If you're young, would you want to do your business first or buy the property so that when you get married, that's already out of the way? Pero yun, yun nga rin yung problem pala eh. If, you, if, you're, if you're single pa, then you buy a property. What if yung mapapangasawa mo hindi naman yun yung gusto? Or things change na pangasawa mo mataga ibang lugar that it's far. Yung binili mong bahay hindi nyo rin magagamit. Again, but you know, there's more passive flexibility that you could have it rented out, and it's because because it's an asset you can always sell it as well. So, may mga garon tendencies, and it will still allow you to still make money off of it as well. So, I guess that's it. Uh, this is Marvin Germo, by the way. For those who are new to this channel, I create daily videos. Not just it's not just anymore one video. And I've been making I think one, two, three videos a day, uh, highlighting investing, particularly the stock market, because I really believe the stock market is one of the greatest investments that Filipinos don't invest in. I really believe the stock market is something that if you're not investing in the stock market yet, I suggest this 2020 you have to start not just investing in it, but start learning about it. Because if you start learning about it, you will see, hey, it's not as hard as what most people think it's think it is it's not as complicated as what most people think it is as well so uh, if you want to know more about videos like this please 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 subscribe and uh, hit the bell so that you get updated every time videos like this come out and then for those who have been watching me you all know the drill uh, please like please comment as you all know it helps uh, the YouTube algorithm push out content like this if you want to see more uh, educational videos that helps other kababayans learn more about this I hope that you will help support this video so that it gets pushed up in in YouTube as well. So I guess that's it. Oh, just a quick plug. All of my seminars are in the links below, are in the description below. The next set of sessions will be, I'll try to put it somewhere here or if it's not in this video, it will be in the description below. Uh, Taiwan, Stocks March, February, then Manila, March, April, London, May, Doha, Qatar, and Singapore, June, Auckland, New Zealand, July, we're gonna be in Sydney, then uh, November, we're gonna be in Dubai and Tokyo. So I guess that's it for now. If you notice it, there's no one-size-fits-all strategy. That's why I'm giving you different opinions on what works. I'm giving you different strategies on property or business. That's why I'm trying to flood YouTube with business and investing opportunities. So you get to decide because at the end of the day, what will help you win is you decide not just based on what you feel, but based on data, based on experiences, based on the analysis of others as well. Then you combine that and you formulate something that will work for you. And that's how you win. So this is Marvin Germo. By the way, happy Chinese New Year to everyone. I'm not Chinese, but happy Chinese New Year to those who follow the lunar uh, calendar. And I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And God bless you all.